Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Lost Islamic History Podcast. In this episode, we're going to discuss one of the greatest scientists who ever lived. Now, we're not talking about Einstein, we're not talking about Galileo, and we are not talking about Isaac Newton. Instead, we're going to talk about the early 11th century Muslim scientist, Ibn al-Haytham, the man that paved the way for people like Einstein, Galileo, and Newton. Ibn al-Haytham was born in the year 965 in the southern Iraqi city of Basra. This was over a hundred years after the Abbasid Caliph al-Ma'mun established the House of Wisdom, Bayt al-Hikmah, in Baghdad. That great university slash translation institute slash library slash research lab was the center of the scientific world from the 800s through the 1200s. In this type of environment, Ibn al-Haytham was able to be well educated in the sciences from a young age. He was, of course, also taught traditional Islamic sciences, which worked hand-in-hand -hand with empirical science, unlike today when science and religion are seen as enemies most of the time in the West. In any case, he ended up working as a government official in his hometown of Basra, but even during this time, he was constantly consumed with reading books. So despite the fact that his day job had nothing to do with science, he was constantly consumed with the subject, always reading and experimenting. Over time, his reputation as a scientist began to grow throughout the Muslim world, as his unique scientific mind was known from Egypt to Persia. One person who heard about him was the Fatimid ruler of Egypt, Al-Hakim bi Amrillah. In the early 1000s, Al-Hakim invited Ibn al-Haytham to come to Egypt to try to find a solution for the flooding of the Nile. The Nile's floods have been dangerous and deadly since the earliest days of Egyptian history, and Ibn al-Haytham was eager to find a way to build a dam large enough to control the flooding. So he accepted al-Hakim's offer and began researching where and how he could place a dam that would regulate the Nile. He soon realized there were two problems. The first problem was that the Nile is really, really, really wide, and it's powerful, and it's fast. Building a dam with the technology available at that time simply was not possible. So Ibn al-Haytham realized there was no way he could accomplish this task, which brought him to his second problem. Al-Hakim was crazy. He was known to have a very short temper, did things without thinking, and was generally an unpleasant person to be around. For example, this man actually banned the game of chess throughout Egypt simply because he wasn't very good at it. So Ibn al-Haytham knew that if he went back to Cairo and admitted he couldn't do the job, there was a good chance he would be executed. So he figured the only way to save his life was to act even crazier than al-Hakim himself. He would talk gibberish and ramble on and on as if he had truly gone insane. Al-Hakim was so terrified by this newly insane scientist that he actually let him go, but put him under house arrest for the next 10 years. Ibn al-Haytham probably didn't even mind that at all. It gave him the time to focus more on his scientific experiments. And it was during this time that he really revolutionized the scientific world. In fact, his most important contribution wasn't anything he discovered or invented. It was the way he discovered and invented things. Since ancient Greece, science has been a philosophical subject. Experimentation wasn't as important as theorizing. Ibn al-Haytham changed all of that. He invented the scientific method. Yes, the same scientific method that everyone still learns today in high school science classes. This revolutionized the way that people understood science and how they did research. Using his scientific method, Ibn al-Haytham made some amazing discoveries and inventions. First of all, he figured out how light works. Before him, people thought that light was emitted from the eyeball, bounced off of objects, and came back into the eye. Using both physics and anatomy, Ibn al-Haytham realized that this was false, and came to the conclusion that light comes from the sun or other sources of light, bounces off of objects, and goes into your eye. Not just that, but he figured out that the image is flipped inside the eyeball and projected onto the nerve cells in the back of the eye. Using this knowledge, he was able to figure out why some people see images out of focus, which led to the solution for this problem, eyeglasses, which he also invented. Continuing with the science of light and how it travels, also known as optics, he discovered how refraction works when light goes through a medium. Using this, he was able to explain why the sky changes color at sunset when the sun's rays hit the atmosphere at an angle. 
Taking it a step further, he even managed to use that information to calculate how deep the atmosphere is, 900 years before spaceflight could actually prove him right. Ibn al-Haytham continued with the science of light and discovered something called a pinhole camera. He realized that when light comes through a tiny hole in a piece of paper, the image is flipped upside down and can be projected onto a wall. This was basically the first camera in history, and it helped pave the way for modern photography. Of course, we're talking about a Muslim scientist from the Middle Ages. So of course he didn't just focus on one topic. In addition to books on the nature of light, he also wrote about math, philosophy, astronomy, and physics. He was the first person to discuss the attraction between two masses, also known as gravity, 700 years before Isaac Newton got hit in the head with an apple. His contributions don't just rival those of Newton and Galileo. He far surpasses them. Without him, those later European scientists would never have made further discoveries. Ibn al-Haytham's books were translated into Latin and other European languages during the Renaissance and clearly made a huge impact on European scientists. His legacy lives on till today, where almost every aspect of mainstream science is in some way connected to this great Muslim scientist of the early 11th century. That wraps it up for this episode of the Lost Islamic History Podcast. For more information on Ibn al-Haytham, you can check out our article about him on lostislamichistory.com. And make sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. Salaam alaikum.